Hey everyone, welcome to Neuropod. In this week's episode, I'll go over news related to Neuralink from the past month. The outline for the episode starts with Max Hodak giving us a glimpse at what Neuralink's working on as he teased an update on Twitter. I'll recap related topics from prior Neuralink events, and then go over another tweet from Max. This time it was a poll with some pretty interesting options. And then I'll briefly mention Neuralink merch, and I'll round out the episode with discussion of Facebook also working on brain-machine interfaces, and in the future probably competing directly with Neuralink. First, the teaser tweet thread from Max has a couple of tweets prior, but one was deleted, so there's not much context here. But Max writes, quote, hopefully, currently deciding whether to release another milestone in animals or whether to wait for our first human patients for the next release, end quote. Unfortunately, there are no big clues as to the timing of the next release, but hopefully they'll be able to share some good progress when they do decide to do it. Just as a reminder, back in the summer of 2019, Elon shared a clip that the Neuralink team was able to have a monkey control a computer with its brain. Listen to this clip. We work with the University of California uh, at Davis uh, for uh, any of the monkey uh, activity. So, um, and and the the results have been been very positive. Um, Do you want to maybe talk about... I, I, think I, I know this is a this, this is a sensitive subject. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but we definitely need to address the elephant in the room, or, or the monkey in the room. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's we wish that we didn't have to to, to work with animals, right? That we just wish that wasn't like a step in the process. But it, but it is. It's like it's a very important part in, in the research and development process to produce um, better outcomes for human patients and improvements in human health. And we're, we try to be very thoughtful and and we follow the the three R's of like reduction, replacement, and refinement of, of laboratory animal medicine. And, and we try to be very careful and thoughtful about it and, and do it as efficiently as possible um, because we believe that the benefit to, to humanity is, is in the end, like the, the, the benefits outweigh the, the negatives. Uh, the, the questioner also asked about the results and um, there is a paper available, I think now, soon, um, that has some of the results in them. You know, Monkey has been able to control the computer with its brain. Just, you know, yeah. FYI. I, I didn't realize so, we were running that result today, but there well, it goes. <laughs> the monkey's going to come out of the bag, so. <laughs> then, more than a year later, at a live progress update, the Neuralink team showcased the ability to implant in pigs as well. The beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the Neuralink in Gertrude's head. So this Neuralink connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout, so whenever she snuffles around and touches something with a snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. Um, and so on the screen, um, you can see uh, each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if she, yeah, she snuffles around, touches a snout on the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching this now. And uh, that's what's making the, the beeping sound. It's been about five months since that update. And since Max mentioned that they might have first implants in human patients, I thought it'd be good to also share a reminder of what Elon mentioned regarding their progress in working with the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA. And we're making good progress towards clinical studies. Um, I'm excited to announce that we received a, a breakthrough device designation from the FDA in July. Uh, thanks to the hard work of the Neuralink team. So. so I want to be clear, we're working closely with the FDA um, and we'll, um, we'll be extremely rigorous. In fact, we will, um, we will significantly, significantly exceed the minimum FDA guidelines for uh, safety. We will make this uh, as safe as possible. Um, you know, just as with, with Tesla, while it is legally possible to ship a one-star car, at Tesla, we the only cars we make are five stars in, in every category. Uh, so uh, we, we actually maximize safety and we'll take the same approach here at Neuralink. Getting back to Max's original tweet thread, he went on to add that the Neuralink robot, or the SoBot, can go to seven centimeters. He continues on with, quote, but also that whole approach is only one aspect of what we are pursuing internally. Seven centimeters gets you all the way down to every interesting target in the basal ganglia in humans, end quote. For those who don't know, the basal ganglia is an area deep in the brain that's responsible primarily for motor control. 
But in my opinion, the big takeaways here from the tweet are that one, the robot designed by Neuralink for Neuralink's specific use case is going to be capable of quite a bit. And two, that the team's working on multiple approaches in parallel. I'm confident that this is true for practically all of the aspects of design, manufacturing, and overall architecture at Neuralink. Moving on to the next tweet from Max, he shared a Twitter poll with some intriguing options. The poll asked, quote, which do you think will have the largest impact on you? The options he gave were one, eidetic memory, two, ideal attentional control, three, ideal emotional control, or four, control of rate of time. Eidetic memory is the more accurate way of saying photographic memory. And I'd personally go with what the majority said, ideal attentional control. Because with that, I feel like you could improve your memory substantially and almost feel like you are controlling time. I'm pretty curious to hear what you all feel would be the most impactful. As you probably know, I read all the comments, so feel free to share your thoughts and make sure to include your reasoning in the comments. That day, Max went kind of tweet happy. A few hours after running the poll, he responded to a tweet from Viv a few months prior. Viv and Max both shared some cool shirt designs, and that thread was followed up with a question asking if Neuralink has any shop. And Max responded with soon. So if you're interested in any Neuralink merch, get excited for it to come shortly. The final part of this episode is about Facebook's ambitions in the entire artificial intelligence and augmented reality plus virtual reality spaces. An article from BuzzFeed shared that Facebook is working on an AI assistant tool called TLDR, which could summarize news articles in bullet points so that a user wouldn't have to read the full piece. The tool supposedly could also provide audio narration as well as a vocal assistant to answer. This feels like the next natural step for news delivery. In fact, I'm pretty surprised this tech hasn't percolated mainstream society already. The article made me go down a rabbit hole of exploring different ambitions Facebook has. The most relevant and interesting piece I found was a clip of Mark Zuckerberg speaking at the Facebook F8 Developers Conference in 2017. And you're also going to hear from Regina Dugan about some of the work that we're doing in Building 8, even further out beyond augmented reality. And that includes uh, work around direct brain interfaces uh, that are going to eventually one day uh, let you communicate using only your mind. Keep in mind, this release was from about four years ago, so Facebook's probably much further along now. In a few more years, we'll probably start to see this whole space, not just with brain-machine interfaces, but prosthetics and similar devices to really gain traction. I primarily bring this up to keep in mind that Neuralink isn't the only one developing brain-machine interfaces. I think they'll probably be successful in making the most advanced ones because they seem to be among the few companies that are willing to explore the invasive approach but I guess we won't know how that prediction plays out for several years. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in supporting further, there's a Patreon offer that goes away shortly. Also, if you're an early Neuropod listener, you probably noticed the editing quality has improved after the December update episode. That's because I've partnered with Andrew Kamen. I develop the content, he does all the video editing, and we partner on finding good videos to reference. He also makes music, so if you're interested in indie, alternative music, check out some of his latest work. I'll link to his channel down in the show notes. Thanks and see you at the next episode.